Hello everyone, my name is William and I'm an application engineer for Go Engineer. Today I'm going to show you how to take reference geometry from Geomagic Graph and bring it into SOLIDWORKS for reverse engineering. If you haven't done so already, I recommend you watch part 1 of this video where I show you how to obtain all of the reference geometry. This video can be found on the Go Engineer YouTube channel or by typing in Geomagic Graph in the YouTube search bar. So this is Geomagic Graph, and once you have all of your reference geometry, all of the entities can be saved as an iGES file, so we can open it in SOLIDWORKS. And you can also specify your export parameters. When you open the iGES file in SOLIDWORKS, you'll notice that your reference planes were exported as planar surfaces. We're going to need those for our extrusions and cuts. But at the moment, I don't need them, so I'm going to hide them. You'll also notice that your cross sections were exported as a 3D sketch. I'm going to have to trace over this 3D sketch and create actual 2D sketches. To make that process easier, I'm going to delete any overlapping segments. For example, for the top cross section, I don't need every single segment, so I'm going to delete all the excess. Also, for the middle cross section, all I really need is this line, so I'll get rid of everything else. Now I can start creating my features. If you recall from the first video, I aligned the bottom of this part to the front plane. So that's where I'll make my first sketch. I'll start off with my line tool and create some lines and arcs. And I have a complete sketch. The last thing I want to do is delete any relationship between this sketch and the 3D sketch. So I'll click on Display Delete Relations, select External, Delete All, and this will allow me to delete the 3D sketch later if I have to. Now I can create my first extrusion. So I'll click on the Extrude icon, and if you recall from the first video, Plane 1 defined the distance of this feature. So I'll click on up to surface and select surface 1 and that will give me the correct distance. I'm going to make my next sketch on this face and to keep this extrusion consistent I'm going to convert some of these edges. Click on convert entities, normal to I don't need to see the solid body at the moment, so I can hide it. And all I need now is a line and a three point arc. I can use corner trim. And I can add tangency here. And this sketch is done. I'm going to turn on the solid body, features, extrude, up to surface, and surface number three should give me the correct distance. And so far, so good. I'm going to make the next sketch on the bottom face, and this one's going to be easy because all I have to do is convert this edge to get the circle. And I can simply grab the endpoints together, and that completes the sketch. Click on Features, Extrude, Up to Surface, and Surface number 4 should give me the correct distance. And that's the last of the extrusions. Now we got to worry about the cuts. For that, I'm going to click on this face, make a new sketch, and I'm going to start sketching the slots. 
I can wake up center marks and get as close as I can. I could have also used a linear pattern to do this. And for the center lines, I can make them all parallel. And I can add a dimension on the first one I made. and make all of those arcs equal. Looks like I also have some circles to make. For that, I can use the perimeter circle tool. Click once, twice, three times. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one more feature. Tangent arc there. And this area here is not a tangent arc, so I'll just put in three point arcs instead. And one more. Now I can click on the Features tab, Extrude Cut, through all both. And that's the first cut. Surface number two and surface number five define the distance of the final cut. So I'm going to make a sketch on surface number two. I can create a quick three point rectangle. And there's that line from the cross section. And all I have to do is extend the ends. I'm going to click on the features tab, extrude cut. And I want to tell the software to extrude up to surface number five. I get a nice preview, hit the check mark, and that's the final cut. I can hide the surfaces and the sketches, and the part has been completely reverse engineered. Thank you for watching.